When I was a kid, I remember being two or three years old and vividly telling my mother, I am a boy, I don't want to wear a dress. And it was all because of sensory issues of not wanting to wear the dress. I wanted pants, you know, and I didn't like the social construct of boys can do this, girls can do this, and there's no in between. And I feel like if I was born nowadays, I would immediately be a boy, you know, and right now everything is so protect, protect trans youth, but what about protect autistic youth? And I want to know what, besides... It's a video right there. <laughs> Besides, Talk like, about a title thumbnail moment. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, continue your question though, yeah. Besides like, um, you know, the laws that are in place to um, stop kids from getting medicalized too early, besides that, what is something else that these parents can do to, you know, not, because I, I, one of my things is I, I would fear that if I was born nowadays, I would immediately be pushed into being a man. And I'm you not. probably would, and that's like really yeah. scary to think about, right? Because look at you out here living and breathing as a woman, and that you wouldn't be, right? It's scary. <laughs> um, it's it's just about information and fighting the censoring of the information, right? It, it, you know, Alex Jones said it right. It's an info war. It's really a war on information and and who monopolizes it and who's telling the truth and who believes what, right? So it's literally just about these D trans stories actually being out there and people seeing it because there's a false narrative that. And it's so stupid how anyone would believe it. If you, if you look at it from a bird's eye view, there's a false narrative that like trans stories are only success stories. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, you know, people don't even believe their own eyes. You can see a lot of them, even that are success stories are very unhappy. And maybe some of them shouldn't have fallen into it, right? It's just about improving education on this stuff. And also advice to parents dealing with it is, if you know the school's gonna get in there and teach your kids misinformation about, you know, gender and trans and all that, then it's on you to get in there before they do. You know, it's not a conversation that's easy to have, but I think that unfortunately, how moldable children's minds are, it's kind of about who gets in there first, right? And I think that if you are a parent concerned about that, you have to really, you know, understand the topic and get in there before the teachers do because you can see what happens when they do and it's really bad. So have that conversation first. I always say that, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a weird conversation to have, right? And it's not about sex, it's just about, you know, gender's different, but it's, you have to be the teacher, you know? Don't don't give your kids to the state. Yeah. Even the sensory issues, people don't understand. The, the sensory, sensory issues, issues, yes, yes. There could be an autistic child who's like the dresses feel uncomfortable, and so mm -hmm. they make me freak that was out. Me. Yeah, that yeah people me. don't really understand autism. That's also education needs to be increased on that, right? Yeah. So it's just about information, which is why we're all here. So thank you. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> Careful. Speaking of fake news and bias in the media, I am so excited to introduce you guys to my sponsor today, Ground News. Ground News is a website and app created to empower and help readers navigate our complex media landscape. Ground News gathers related articles from more than 50,000 sources around the world in one place, so you can compare how different outlets cover the same story. Every story comes with a visual breakdown of the political bias and ownership, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. This is an article on Ground News about a trans athlete. You can see that it's been covered by a total of 173 sources. 37% of the sources lean left that are covering the story. One of the most popular features that Ground News offers, and my personal favorite, the blind spot feed. It features stories that are underreported by either side of the political spectrum. This feature is fully unlocked with the Vantage plan. I personally endorse Ground News 100%. I think what they're doing is amazing and it's providing invaluable insights. Go to ground.news slash Blair White or go to the link in the video description to give it a try. If you sign up through my link, you'll get 40% off of the Vantage plan, which is what I use to get unlimited access to all of Ground News features. I think Ground News is doing very important work and I hope that you'll check them out. I'm a detransitioner. Um, in high school, I thought that I was trans male. It turned out that I was not. And I guess um, my question is kind of why do you think that the medical establishment is so comfortable misdiagnosing kids with gender dysphoria when they don't have it? Because I actually do have a mental disorder, but it's not gender dysphoria. But the thing about the disorder that I do have is that it causes me to have quite an unstable sense of identity. And so I feel like it's people like me, like whether it be borderline personality disorder or like autism or anything like that, that kind of tend to fall victim to this and get misdiagnosed. But the thing is that like, 
with any other disorder, there's gonna be like checks and balances, like kind of ruling out the other possibilities before you're put on the medication. Whereas like when I went into that clinic, the gender clinic, it was basically two questions. It's like, how long have you identified as trans? Oh, a couple years, okay, cool. Um, and then like, they just basically did my blood work and that was it, they just handed me the prescription. Um, and now like looking back on it, like I just wish I could like tell myself like please don't do this because like now like my biggest dream in life is to have a kid and I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do that because they were like oh yeah you'll probably become infertile do you want to like freeze your eggs okay yeah no all right because like when you're a kid you're not thinking about that and you're not thinking in those terms so um, basically like why do you think that we're so comfortable doing this especially when doctors are like supposed to be under the oath of like do no harm um, and why is it so taboo to like question like does this child really have dysphoria or is it like something else that we should be getting to the root of first Wow, thank you for being so vulnerable with that, first of all. I mean, my God. Um, and I hope that any like leftover side effects and everything, I hope those are all dissolved and you, you can have kids of your own. I really want that for you. Thank you. Um, so I think it's a few things. And a few people immediately said money and that's obviously number one, right? That's the most true. Uh, it's also ego and it's also this weird, it's about the people giving them the drugs in a lot of ways. Like when I, when I see like people that are so pro trans kid talking, if you muted it, you would think they were like talking about themselves. You know, it, you, you would think that they're patting themselves on the back for being so open and they're, you know, they're, they're flexing and virtue signaling that they're so open-minded and they're thinking of the way forward and that they're thinking of these concepts and that they're highly intelligent for doing so. And it's about ego, which is really strange. I also think, and you might have something interesting to piggyback on this, is that like, I think also society is kind of living in this ever-present like guilt and like low-key trauma over how gay people used to be treated, and I think people don't want to repeat that. And so there's a valid conversation to be had about like kids that are like observably gay in schools that used to get bullied and some still do, and bad things happening to them. No one wants a repeat of that, and so they just assume out of wanting to feel like they're making the safe, right decision that a trans kid is the same thing when it's not even in the same ballpark, right? Like I don't believe in trans children. Uh, so I think it's like a, a weird trauma thing we're living in with like past you know, cultural mistakes too. What do you think? I, I think everything you said is true. I also think it's a hint of laziness. I think giving a kid a pill mm -hmm. is the easy way to go and saying this is gonna cure everything. And, and it, it, it's, you know, my, my therapist used to say, um, if you spill paint on the floor, you can cover up with a blanket or you can actually take the time to clean it up. And to me, diagnosing somebody as trans when they're not necessarily is throwing a blanket over the issue. Mm -hmm. And it's not actually taking the time to realize, what, what would you say you have bipolar disorder? Um, borderline. Borderline, yeah. I, I've done video on that recently actually. And it, it's pretty common for people with borderline personality disorders who identify as like non-binary and queer and trans and stuff, so. All right. Yeah, it, it is laziness, it's, I it's agree It's more common that. than you think actually, yeah. yeah. yes. Cause, because that's probably a hell of a lot harder to identify and diagnose and treat properly than like, oh, she's a boy. It is, yeah. You know it's, what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, she's like just a boy. extensive therapy and yeah. like, like really taking ownership for your own actions and like working through that and changing your own behavior, which is like, that's a lot harder to change than just like taking a drug, so. Yeah. Right. I yeah. think it's laziness and, and I think it's everything she said and then the laziness on top of yeah. it. Right. right. But thank, thank you, you for really your story and your that. question. I am so excited to be doing a live version of my podcast at the Blair White Project all over America and Toronto, Canada. Each show will have a signing, a meet and greet, a special hangout for VIP fans, and a portion where you can grab the mic and talk to me, ask me questions, drag me. Don't do that. I would say my podcast is pretty uncensored, but imagine how uncensored we can get together in person. I'm a little scared. We're stopping in Austin, Phoenix, Washington, DC, Brooklyn, Atlanta, Toronto, Canada, Minneapolis, Chicago, Orlando, Dallas, Houston, and Nashville. Get your tickets now at x1entertainment.com slash Blair White, link in the description. You guys know I have not done any in-person events in years, literally, so I don't know when the next time this is gonna happen. This is something very special for the Blair White Army, so if you're a member of the Blair White Army, I'm going to need you to make sure you don't miss the Blair White Takes America tour. See you soon. Hi, you guys. I love you both Hi. so much. Love um, you. My name is Rachel. I also came in from San Diego. and I'm I sorry. Go... We'll add a California date sometime. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It was a fun drive. Um, I go to UC San Diego, and I just quickly wanted to say I would love a college tour. That would be amazing. 
And I also wanted to say I'm unvaccinated and you can get exemptions where there's a will, there's a way if anyone yeah. out there is worried about that. Um, so my question. Not the pure blood. Yeah. So Blair, you and I are about the same age. Um, I feel like. Oh, so you're old too. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it being in college at this age. It's hard. Um, anyways. I feel like I've, uh, I feel like I've followed you through a lot of growth, and I want to thank you both for sharing your experience and strength with the world. It means so much to us. My question is, when I was younger, um, I remember it was just LGB for a really long time, or for a while, I don't know, and then T started to be added, um, and LG and B are obviously sexual orientations. And I wanted to know your guys' opinions on whether or not T belongs with LGB. Um, just any comments you have in that. I mean, I don't see myself as part of it regardless of what fucking letters are in it. You know, I hate, I hate the collectivist stuff. I hate the idea that I'm part of some coalition of, of what? Of what? I was almost going to go off about coalition of some shit, but what are they really? It's like it's gay people, it's trans people, but then trans people who aren't trans, and then it's queer. I hate all of it. I, I don't see myself as, you know, part of any group. I'm an individual. And just like some of the questions were like, why aren't you doing the rallies or the events? It's like, well, I don't really do groups like that. You know, I'm just like a solo person. But so, I mean, I would support them rearranging the acronym, I guess. I just, just, I just don't care about it. What do you, you know, think? It, I, again, my age, we needed it back in the day. We really did need it. We don't need it anymore. Now it's been completely destroyed and it's full of shit. So I think the problem is, is that now it's just there, right? And I'm totally on board with Blair. Like, I don't need that. That's not a community, first of all, to me. I, I need awesome people in my life. And it doesn't need to, I don't care where you come from. Are you a good person? Are we cool? Can we hang out together? Can we, you know, like that, that to me is community. But LGB really came from a space when we really needed it back in the day. And I don't necessarily think people are cool with gay people now. People have no issues. It's the trannies that are causing all the problems. And people were even cool with the trannies at one point, And people don't understand that. People don't understand that. You know? Also, you know, trannies, like myself, came from the gay community. I was a gay woman. And so, you know, when I transitioned, I still felt comfortable within that space. But now it's, yeah, the trans has ruined everything. It's a real bummer. And it's why I just don't, you know, and also I don't live as a trans person. I live as a dude. Like the whole point was to transition and live as a man, not as trans. Trans have become an identity now, which you got to remember, that's not really, I think, the reason why we transition to be trans. We transition to be these people. The B and LGBT is for bummer now. It's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you. you. I want to thank you for bringing attention and awareness to alleged sex predators when other people are scared to talk about that online. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to make a note there. I think that's actually the thing I get the most hate for, which is crazy. I said it was the trans kid thing earlier, but actually I think it's that, which is sick. But keep going. <laughs> well, when you get hate, you're doing something right, so. 100. Uh, thank you for incorporating scientific facts when you speak upon gender. This should be a common sense ideology for many, but sadly, the media has brainwashed a lot of people regardless of age. Education for every person is necessary when speaking on the, difference, the differences between sexuality, gay, straight, transgender, transsexual, cross-dressers, because they are all very different things. And I see that you are one of the few that are talking about that and educating people. And again, it's so needed in today's climate. Um, I see you bashed, ridiculed, blackballed on certain platforms, all for having an opinion that pushes the norm and focuses on the truth. I see people who use you for clickbaits and then turn when the narrative is then good for them. And I applaud you for always having that tough exterior because I can't imagine it's easy to go through. So in case you don't hear it enough, you're appreciated, you're talented, you're smart, and there's your own party and it's all of us in this room and your Blair White Army. Thank you, that's so nice of you. And last but not least, you need to take a lesson from Jubilee and start your own Jubilee-style debate. Oh my God, I should. Oh my God, you're amazing. Thank you so much for that. That was really sweet of you. Oh my God, you mostly want to cry. I was going to say, you're making me oh my cry. God.
Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Oh my God, it's so good to be here. Uh, my name is Kelby. Um, you guys were talking about like feminine and masculine before and like being a man and being a woman. And um, I totally agree that it can be this kind of elusive thing where it's like, I don't know what it is, but I'm also spiritual and we have like, oh, masculine energy is this way, like very strong and like safety providing and physical. And then feminine energy is like kind of elusive and creative and, and um, there's so much to it. I, I can't even put words to it, but feminine energy is just it's a beautiful thing. So anyway, the divine um, feminine, the divine, divine masculine, feminine, and all that, yeah. right? And so, and I do believe that in a person we have both. We really do. We, but in general, a biological woman will have more feminine energy, and a, a biological male will have more male. But I look at you, Blair, and you clearly have more feminine energy. Like it's very clear to me that you do. Um, and so, when you talk about like mental illness, it kind of like Maybe it's my understanding of mental illness, but I almost like it hurts me a little because I see you and I'm like, you're not mentally ill, like a person who needs intervention or like somebody who needs to be watched or, or something like that. So it, I'm almost watching and I'm like, you're not mentally ill. You're just, you were born with feminine energy, like strong feminine energy in a male body. I get what you mean. And I totally... I mean, thank you for just being sweet and almost like defending me against myself, dragging myself. But um, I guess it just comes down to, you know, I have just thoughts about mental illness that it's not necessarily to be stigmatized. So like when I say it, I'm not trying to put myself down in the same way that if I was up here saying I have really bad social anxiety or I have, you know, depression or, you know, any of the others, you know, I just think it's just a fact of my character. Um, you know, gender dysphoria, I do think, is a mental illness. I do have to, like, hold on that. But I also do think there is something we said about the fact that, you know, maybe it was, you know, created in my brain because I had that, you know, energy that you spoke of, you know, from birth, which, I mean, my parents thought I was gay when I was, like, a toddler. So, like, you're right. Like, it was, it was there. But, you know, I just think it boils down to if you think being mentally ill is something to be you know, feeling bad about. And if you're not violent or like, you know, harm to society, if you can be a productive person, I don't think there's any stigma in being mentally ill. What about you? What do you think? Well, that's why I call it uh, mental disorder, not necessarily illness, right? Because I always say it crazier than it probably should be. Yeah. Mental disorder, whatever. <laughs> but, it, but it is in that category. We have to keep it in the mental illness disorder space because if we didn't, look what happened. Anyone can be trans. So I, I, I think to kind of piggyback off Blair, it, it, it for for me as well, it's important for me to understand it's it's not normal the way I feel. It's not normal for a girl to want to be a boy or a man. And I think if we normalize that, that's very dangerous. I think the first thing we have to do is we need to say, why do you feel that way? And, you know, this is the last resort, people. This isn't the first resort. And now we've, ch we've put the cart before the horse. We've now given kids this idea that you can just change your sex. I did not change my sex. I'm still a chick. I'm an ugly chick, but I'm a chick. <laughs> and it's okay. I have no issues with it. Once you sort of understand where you're at in the world, you can walk the world so amazingly happy and peaceful. And I do agree with you, male and female energy is very important. And I really connected to my female energy after I became a man. I hated it before. But now that I'm this guy, I love that part of myself. But thank you for defending me against myself. <laughs> I'm like... I'm here for you, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. My name is Megan, and I'm a current undergraduate student at UGA, so go dogs. Um, yeah. But, yeah, okay, yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm studying politics. I would love to go into politics after I graduate. Um, love to become a senator or congresswoman, but if you need someone for office when you run for president, I got you. Um, but I had a question. Um, what advice would you give to young conservative college students, especially those in the LGBT community? Wow. That is an excellent question because that's how I started my channel. I was a college student in California and I was experiencing so much just like turmoil internally over the fact that I couldn't speak my mind in a place that was supposed to be about higher learning and open conversations, all the things that, you know, it's sold as, right? Or maybe they don't even sell it as that anymore. I don't know. They did when I went to college because, again, I'm old. Um, but, you know, my advice is, unfortunately... 
if you have to get a good grade and, and fake an opinion on a paper, ain't nobody mad at you for doing that just to get the A so you can get in the field you want to get in and change things from the inside. So never feel shame over doing that. But I, I will say, you know, I encourage you to find other outlets to speak, right? And in any way you can speak on campus, right? Like when you can do it, when you can't get the, get the good grade if you can. But I think that there are also a lot of youth organizations, not youth because you're in college, sorry, but a lot of like TPUSA goes to a lot of college campuses now and they have, you know, chapters in different cities. So I would encourage that kind of a thing. And then also speak out on social media. That's what I did, you know, and I think that anytime you're operating, like I said earlier, in that authenticity frequency, the world is going to open up for you. It, it did for me. It, it, it does for everyone I see in every lane that is just real. So do what you can when you can and don't beat yourself up when you can't. That's all. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Blair. How are you? I'm doing really good. Tomorrow is actually my birthday, and my birthday present was coming here to myself. So happy early happy birthday, birthday to you, too. Thank you. Happy birthday. Um, I understand that you have come to a place of faith in God, and I just want to encourage you in that you are going to be that instrument of the divine and just shake the world. And I'm just so happy to be here, and I'm Thank you for everything that you like ever. I discovered you last Christmas. All of my friends have left me because of my faith and because I've started to lean towards center. And uh, listening to you and watching you has given me the tools to stand up for myself. So thank you. Thank you for saying that. That's such a huge compliment. It really is. And that's why I do it. So that's the whole thing. Um, yeah, I've, I've definitely been on a spiritual journey for the past maybe year, year and a half now. And it's been wild. You know, I went my whole life until about 30, really exactly 30. Suddenly, it's like, I don't know, maybe a, a part of my brain activated that wasn't there before. You know, they say certain parts of the brains do correspond with spiritual beliefs and spirituality, that pineal gland, right? But, um, you know, it's been a life changer. Like, I, I was never the person that would say the words God is real, but I say it now because I believe it and I feel it and I know it. And I know that that's not everyone's, you know, belief. And I understand that too because there was a point in my life where I'd be the last person saying that. So it's been amazing. And I take that, um, what you said, with high esteem. So thank you. God bless you, Blair. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.